Welcome to the second episode of the Sanskrit lessons for yoga instructors and practitioners. Today we're going to take a look at a few um, body parts. So begin with the feet. Pada, foot, with a long A. Example, Eka Pada Kaundini Asana. Just the name of the yoga asana, yoga pose. And the previous class we established that Eka means one. So Eka Pada is one foot. Janu, ni. As you can see in this word, a also long. Janu. Example in other yoga pose, Janu Shirshasana. There is actually two body parts here. Janu means ni and Shirsha means head. We'll talk about it later. So Janu Shirshasana literally translated as head to the knee. Napi. Navel. Nabhi with a long A. Nabhi Kriya. The set of exercises from the Kundalini Yoga style, which is emphasizing the work with the navel, chakra, manipura, and uh, establishing the core balance. Hridaya. Heart. If you look at this word, you see this little point below the R. That's what making the sound with the E, Hri. Tala Hri Daya Marma. Marma is the Ayurvedic acupressure point. And Tala Hri Daya is the center of the palm or the heart of the palm. Hasta, hand. In this word, the both are short. Hasta. Pada Hastasana. And again, Two body parts here. Pada we already know, which is foot, and hasta is hands. So in this pose, we're bringing our hands towards the feet and folding forward. Pada hastasana. Griva, neck. Again, both vowels are long. Griva. Griva shakti vikasaka. Is a part of Sukshma Viyama or joint exercises where we're exercising our neck and moving our head in a different direction. Literally, Griva Shakti Vikasaka would be translating as opening of the neck or perhaps opening the energy pathways in the neck. And in the picture, you just see uh, the Guruji Thirianda Brahmachari performing one of the exercises from this set. Nasika, nose. Again, both are long. Nasika. Nasika mudra. Uh, probably this mudra called Nasika because uh, we use it as we performing the different pranayama breathing exercise, such as Anuloma Viloma or Nadi Shodhana, alternative nostril breathing. Kapal, skull. Both are long. Kapal. Kapalabhati. We often hear it, uh, they name it pranayama, or no, I mean the breathing exercise, but in fact it's shat karma. And we were discussing what it is shat karmas in the previous lesson, so you can check it out. Kapalabhati literally translating as a shining skull, as this vigorous breath bringing the blood circulation into our brain and head area. And the last one, shirsha, head. This is the two different sounds. First is sh and the second is sh, shirsha. Shirshasana, such as headstand. So shirsha is head, asana is posture. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this knowledge was useful for you and now you understand a little bit better the different names of mudras and asanas. If you want to continue, stay tuned with the Sanskrit classes and get to know even more about this beautiful language. Please subscribe on my YouTube channel and turn on the notification so you'll never miss the new class. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.